Hello everybody, welcome to the video on the work done in uniform circular motion and torque. In a uniform circular motion, there is no work done on the mass. This is because of two reasons. In a uniform circular motion, the object undergoes a circular motion with a constant speed. Therefore, there is no change in the kinetic energy of the mass, as the kinetic energy equals to half the mass times the velocity squared. So if the speed remains constant, the magnitude of velocity will also remain constant, therefore giving you a constant and unchanged kinetic energy. The second reason is that the angle between the centripetal force, which is acting on the mass in circular motion throughout the entire revolution, is perpendicular, so it is at 90 degrees, to its displacement. The work done equation tells us that the magnitude of work done is equal to the product of the magnitude of the force applied on the object and the displacement that the object undergoes times by cosine theta. The theta here is the angle between the force vector, that is the centripetal force, and the displacement of the object, which is also represented by the linear velocity v. If angle here is 90 degrees, cosine 90 will give us a value of zero. Therefore, this will help us determine that the work done on an object in uniform circular motion is zero. When we do have force vectors that are not perpendicular on an object that can go around in circular motion, then we'll have work done. This is what produces a torque in circular motion. Suppose that you have a door that can be pushed or pulled around a hinge, and we can apply three forces, each of 100 newtons at three points, A, B, and C. At which point do you think will be easier to actually rotate the door about the hinge? Your answer should be C. If we apply a 100 newton force at the furthest point on the door away from the pivot point that is the hinge, the door should be able to rotate the most easily. This concept of the net effect of a rotational force on an object that can go around in a circular motion is known as torque. So despite the fact that there are equal forces being applied at all three points, A, B, and C, it is easiest to turn the door at point C, which is the furthest point from the hinge. Therefore, we say that there's the largest torque produced at C because the distance from point C at which the force is applied from the hinge is the largest. This distance here is known as a lever arm. The magnitude of torque is equal to the lever arm distance in meters, times by the perpendicular force that is 100 newtons applied at a given point. How much torque is produced by opening a jar of pickles if the lid on the jar has a radius of 0 0.038 meters and the force exerted perpendicularly to the lid is 150 newtons? So we can model a lid as a lever arm system where this is the middle of the lid, that's the pivot point, and the force applied is perpendicular, so 150 newtons and the distance between them is 0.038 meters. So the torque here is equal to the lever arm distance times by the perpendicular force, which is 150 newtons. This gives me 5.7 newton meter. So we discussed that the torque is a turning effect of a rotational force. Torque is produced by the force vector that is perpendicular to the lever arm. This is very important to remember, as most of the time the force vector that's applied in a rotational motion is usually not at 90 degrees to the lever arm. So in this case, if we have a force vector that's inclined, that makes an angle with the lever arm, say theta, we can construct a right angle triangle to find the force vector that is perpendicular to the lever arm. Let's call this Fy. In this case, we have the opposite side of the angle, so Fy divided by F, which is the original force vector. This is equal to sine theta. So the perpendicular force, Fy, is equal to F multiplied by sine theta. So this is the magnitude of the force that's actually producing the torque effect around the pivot point of the door. So the torque formula equation can be further modified to become the lever arm times by the force magnitude times by sine theta, 
where theta is the angle between the force vector and the lever arm. Again, in this equation, you should see that if we have a longer lever arm, that is, if the distance r increases, this will allow us to produce a greater torque. If we have a greater angle, which at maximum will become 90 degrees, we'll have a greater torque. Any angle that's less than 90 degrees, so in this case, if the angle here becomes acute, less than 90 degrees, the torque will then decrease compared to if the angle is perpendicular. So the greatest torque is always produced when the angle is perpendicular, or when I 90 degrees. Let's look at the same scenario as before. Calculate the torque produced by opening the jar of pickles if the lid of the jar has the same radius as before, 0.038 meters and a 150 newton force is applied on the lid as the angle shown here. So you can see the angle here is no longer 90 degrees. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the magnitude of this force vector here that is perpendicular to the lever arm. We can do this in two ways. We can directly use this angle here, 120, to calculate the torque. So torque is 0.038 times by the force, 150, times by sine 120. This gives me 4.9 Newton meter. What we can also do is using the vectors to construct a right angle triangle and using that right angle triangle to find the perpendicular force vector. So we know that this angle here is going to be 120 minus 90 degrees because this one here is perpendicular. So this gives me an angle of 30 degrees. So this will be 30 degrees, and this angle here will be 60 degrees. Using this right-angle triangle, we can again write a trigonometric ratio. So Fy, which is the opposite side to the angle 60, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 150. This is equal to sine 60 degrees. So that means Fy is equal to 150 times by sine 60 degrees. If we use this expression here, 150 times by sine 60, instead of 150 times by sine 120 degrees, we will get exactly the same answer, because sine 120 is equal to sine 60. Now, what's going to happen to the torque if there are multiple forces applied on the same lever arm? The total torque acting on a system that can undergo circular motion is equal to all the torque combined together. However, when we combine and add the torque together, we need to consider a few things. We need to consider the different force magnitudes that's applied, and of course the angle at which the force vectors are applied to the lever arm, and the respective lever arm distances, so that is the distance the force vectors applied at compared to or from the pivot point. So you can see in this diagram, I've got three forces, F1, F2 and F3, and all of them have various magnitudes and strengths, and they're applied at different distances, R1, R2, and R3 respectively, in relation to the middle of the balance. In addition to the forces, angle, and lever arm distance, we need to also consider the direction of rotation each force vector will produce. So you can see that the force F1 and F3, these two forces will make balance beam to go anti-clockwise, whereas F2 will do the opposite, it will make the balance beam go clockwise. So F1 and F3, these will produce the same torque or the same rotational effect on the balance beam, whereas F2 will produce a counter effect. Okay, let's consider the following system. Calculate the total torque and determine which direction the seesaw rotates if we look at all the force vectors that's being applied to the balance beam. We'll calculate the directions, we'll calculate the force vectors separately and consider directions using positive and negative sign. So let's just say the clockwise direction, so the anti-clockwise direction is a positive, whereas the clockwise direction is a negative direction for the torque. So for the very first force vector, this will be T1. So T1 is going to be 100 times by sine 45 degrees times by 0 0.6, which is a lever arm. Now this is going to push the seesaw in the anti-clockwise direction, so we'll leave this as positive. T2 
is going to be this vector over here, the middle one. And this is going to be 100 newtons times by sine 60 degrees times by 0 0.5 meters. For this force vector, it will produce a negative torque because it will push the seesaw in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to add a negative in front of this equation. And for T3, it will be 150 newtons times by sine 90 degrees because the force vector here is shown to be perpendicular times by 1 meter. And we'll leave this as positive because this force vector will produce a positive torque in the anti-clockwise direction. So if we combine these three torque together, my total torque is going to be T1 plus T2 plus T3. So this gives me 149 newton meter. And because the final answer is positive, this indicates that the torque will produce an anti-clockwise rotation on the seesaw. So when you're looking at multiple force vectors and the total torque effect or the rotational effect, make sure you consider not only the force magnitudes in the lever arm and the angle, but also the direction of rotation each force vector will result in. When a rotational force or torque is applied on one side of a lever arm, the same magnitude of torque is also experienced across the entire lever arm. So for example, if I exert an 100 Newton force at the very end of this balance beam, the same torque produced by the 100 Newton force, which will be torque, is equal to 100 Newtons, and let's suppose the angle here is 90 degrees, so it will be sine 90 multiplied by the lever which is 1 meter. This gives me a simple 100 Newton meter torque. The same magnitude of 100 Newton meter torque will be experienced across the entire lever arm. So if an object or someone is sitting at the end of this balance beam, they will also experience the same torque, of course, in the same direction, which is counterclockwise. If the lever arm distance for the mass is different to one meter, then the force that's being produced by this torque on the person or the mass will be different. So in this case, the same torque, 100 newton meter, this will be equivalent to the force exerted by the torque multiplied by the lever arm distance at that point. So this will be 0 0.5 meter. And if we divide 0 0.5 on both sides, we'll get the force produced will be 100 divided by 0 0.5, and this gives me 200 newtons. And you can see here, due to the difference in the lever arm distance, the force produced by the same torque is much greater, specifically twice the magnitude as the force applied on the other side of the lever arm. So what you can see here is that a stronger force is associated with a shorter side. So that is a 0 0.5 meter on the lever arm. And therefore a weaker force is associated with a longer side.